Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Stories Around Azeroth with myself, Titan's Creed, and joining me as always is the best gnome in the known galaxy, one Mr. Frasley. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. It's, it's great to be here. It's great to be on a Sunday night. I'm feeling much better. My cold's gone. I can speak clearly now. The snot is gone. Oh, charming. Um, but yes, I'm glad you're feeling better because I've been feeling a little under the weather the last couple of days. But I'm well enough to come here and do this. We haven't missed a day yet and I don't intend to just yet. We may yep. be late, but we ain't going to miss it. Absolutely. Brilliant stuff. As always, if you're new to stories around Azeroth, we talk about our adventures in the wonderful world of Azeroth itself and all the stories that we have around uh, the world of Warcraft itself. So, Mr. Frasley, where have your journeys in Azeroth taken you this week? Well, the first one I did was I went to the Horde site again, trying to work on that honor bound because I need the war campaign for that wolf for the Alliance. So I went there, and it's a lot of work, a lot of rep grind, stuff like that. Then after that, I decided to go over to my iron. My iron is up to, I believe, level 25, almost 26 now. And uh, Capo is saying that if I... Capo is saying that I'm going to die at 26. So I uh -huh. thought Capo... Capo, you're wrong. Brilliant stuff. So, myself, uh, I've managed to get my Horde Mage uh, all the way. I can't remember where I said I got to. I'm quite sure I had it at 120 at this time last week. But uh, I have got on a bound to Exalted. Nice! It's, it's not that bad once you hit the 14,000 revered mark because most of the war campaign just boosts you all the way up and then you just do world quests or just wait another day for another... Um, Invasion. The Honor Bound campaign is really good. Uh, especially the Exalted story for Magkar Orc. And we'll talk about that shortly. But at the moment, I'm really just on the rep grind for Zandalaris to unlock them now. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I'm working on Zandalaris. I've started leveling my Blood Elf Demon Hunter now to get to 120. So I can see the Blood Elf Heritage Armor campaign story. That's what I really want to aim as my next big thing. Otherwise, yeah, it's it's been a fun week. There's something you're missing, I think, unless it was a week ago. What else did you get this past week? Oh, I hit my 400 mounts this week. Yes. Yeah! I got <laughs> my... <laughs> that's it. Uh, big, big, big thing. Got lucky with... Um, I got... Yes! The Jade Warbringer, after six years, finally dropped this week. Six years of farming. Jesus. Um, and then Mount 400 was actually the mount for completing the war campaign. Oh, that's cool. The <laughs> two sides or just the campaign? The, the, du the double ancient one, yeah. Okay, very cool. Yeah, See, that it, one. Hella nice. It, it pays to have a whole horde and alliance. It does. It does, absolutely. Um, lots of leveling to do, though. Um, Capo in the chat. We are live on Twitch today. Uh, Capo is saying that the Magkar had a hell of a quest chain, much better than Dark Iron. Uh, I'd agree, but the Dark Iron does open up some additional lore, especially using the Black Anvil, which, you know, the Black Anvil was used to make a lot of stuff back in Classic, and you needed it to make some certain armors and bits and pieces. So seeing something else regarding the Black Anvil itself was pretty cool. Yeah, I would agree with you on that. But I do agree. It's pretty, it's pretty underwhelming. Um... But I do want to talk about the the war campaign. It's really good to see both sides of that story uh, because you can you can place where everything is. And I had I've recently redone um, the the 8.0 war campaign on my blah, my night elf demon hunter. So I was going kind of like oh well I can position these timeline pieces now. It's really it's really fun, really interesting, um, and. I enjoy that they are keeping the the stuff out of the way a little bit, kind of like making it. Did I just freeze up. No, you're fine. Okay, my my video froze. I thought I want to make sure I was still on with you. I I thought it was really. I like that they're making it where you are getting a bit in peace, but they're rewarding you for trying more things. It's like some of those Bioware games where you would get more lore the more you do. You can choose to just know your own thing. It's to me, it resembles life. In life, 
I can have my own perspective here. But until I talk with somebody of another perspective, I won't know what they're going through. I won't know their history, their, their culture, their heritage. And I'm seeing that in the game. It's kind of like Legion. We saw that with the opening campaign. We thought the Horde were 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 jerks. So we found out why they left us. Well, I mean, that storyline is still unfolding as well. Um, which is another part. Because once you hit Revered and have done Zandalar forever, uh, with uh, once you hit Revered with the Zandalari Trolls, you start getting the Vol'jin story unlocks Ooh. and a part of that is talking to the spirit of Vol'jin and finding out who which of the lower spoke to Vol'jin to tell him to put Sylvanas in charge so there's a story that's unfolding there um, I don't get the next part until Exalted unfortunately and uh, I think there there's rumours that we might be seeing more down the line as well so there's that but the, the biggest thing I want to talk about today, um, on Frazzlecast this week, I'll ha you'll have to forgive me for missing the number, you had uh, Jin from Morally Grey? Yes. And I asked him a question in the stream, and it was about, would we like to... Because uh, the first thing I said, because you asked for questions earlier on in the week, was um, any questions and bits and pieces. And I... Being the cocky bot guy, I said, uh, not a law question because I know all law, but where does he see the next expansion going? Now, we talked briefly last week that I think we might be going to Shadowlands, but based on the conversations you guys had about law and everything else and bits and pieces, and based on the Maghar story, you haven't done this yet. You haven't seen it, have you? No, not yet, but okay. I'm, I'm okay with spoilers. So. Brilliant. Now, it's been a quest line that I've wanted to do since we saw the data mining for it. Because it's about going back to Draenor. And we see that the... Um, we're, once they eradicated all the demons, the uh, Nauru really pushed the, the Draenei on the planet to so much zealotry in, with the light. To really, really hard, hard stance follow the light and embrace it and then use it to cleanse the world you know get everybody to follow it which is pretty much taking the story we saw with um the naru and illidan in the on the way to argus on that storyline back in legion and taking that storyline and really dialing it up to 11 so it's interesting to see where they go now i i, I don't want to spoil too much about it but because we don't really see a lot of it on that Draenor part, essentially. But what I was thinking is that maybe we'll get something to do with the infinite dragonflight in the next expansion instead. Now, while this was one of the questions I, I raised on the actual cast you were having itself, like the question I asked were, would we like to see a full infinite dragonflight expansion where dungeons and world areas are pockmarked by their influence? Uh, like, so here's my thinking. Like, if you remember back in Pandaria, one of the things we saw in part of the, the future time when we're going through some of the questing areas is we see a bronze dragon that is overlooking the throne, like Garrosh's throne room downstairs. One of the parts of the quest line before you get to Draenor is where you're with Anachronos overlooking that throne room. Now, I can't remember the exact part, but it highly flashes back to that. Now, we know that the Infinite Dragonflight it, it's in itself is a time loop. Like, Nors Dormu will become Morazond. We, we know that's going to be a thing. What I'm thinking is, is if we do get Nazoff at the end of this expansion as the main bad, which is a, which is a very big possibility of doing it, I have a feeling that Either Sylvanas will redeem herself in a way that I was working with us to like bring the old god out and then we'll kill it. She'll she'll get the killing blow with like Zalatath and trap it in the dagger and whatever because Zalatath's empty now. But you know that's something we normally after we get a big old god big bad we don't see anything for a couple of expansions. Like um, we had Cthulhu, we then didn't see anything until Wrath, we then didn't see anything until Pandaria. 
and now you know we saw we saw the beginnings in Legion and whisperings of Nazoth and now we've got Nazoth really come out to the fold now so I'm feeling that we're not going to get that and I agree with Jin that we're probably not going to see Shadowlands um, if only for the fact that if they do move away to make Sylvanas a big bad, then she'll go into hiding for an expansion and really steep her plans up. Which leads into the infinite dragonfly and doing something with them. Because they are a big bad in the story that we've not really seen anything with. You know, the last time we saw any infinite dragonfly influence was other than the deaths of Chromie, which is still, you know, unresolved who was active there. You know, having something to do with the Dragonflights again brings back what we talked about last week with the Dragon Isles and everything else. And But think think about what we could do as a, as a pre-launch event for an Infinite Dragonflight expansion. They could take several... Like, we could have these time rifts using the, the Void Tears. We could use those. They'll pop up in certain parts all around Azeroth, Pandaria, Northrend. And we go through and we see a different time area. And then, you know, we know that the original plan for Draenor was that there, there was a big uh, hourglass that was going to be the main focal point where we breach into there and, that, and then we would move outwards from there. Why not just bring that back? So we step into an alternate Azeroth, as it were, like the remnants of the Bronze Dragonflight allow us to go in there via the Caverns of Time. And we can use that to step into this alternate Azeroth, which has been you know, rewound by the Infinite Dragonflight, and we go there and fight them off that. Wow. And that would line up, I know it could be coincidence, but it would line up with Classic in the same time. Kind you, of, you yeah. Your, your Classic, and, it, and then it would allow them to, to continue the storyline like we were talking about with Classic. And then also, because there are some unfinished storylines in WoW, and as Ali's been going through the Caverns of Time, I'm like, kind of amazing the this whole time traveling technology that that we have in the, in the plot i would love to have more of that i'd love to be able to go back and see some of these other scenes because some of the people like gin was saying some of their some of their best stuff they saw was in the rts stuff It'd be cool if we could go back and relive that or things that weren't ever in the game there is definitely a lot we could see like um i don't know i'm, I'm just thinking on, on this alternate Azeroth, like whatever, what would what would be the biggest old storylines that you'd like to see that ended up differently? What if what if uh, Van Cleef won in original da Dead Minds? You know, yeah. What if he the boat sailed out into um, Stranglethorn Vale? They took out and just took control of all Booty Bay, and then like walked up north, and we see Van Cleef in charge of the Alliance. Because they went and took over Stormwind before the harbour was there. Um, what if the Twilight Cultists... Not Twilight Cultists. Um, Black Camp? No, uh, the Orcs that were in... Oh my goodness. The name of the Orc dungeon in Orgrimmar. Um, Rage Fire Ranger. Chasm. What yes. if originally... Because that we had the, it was like a whole bunch of like orc cultists, warlocks in Ragefire Chasm. What if, what if they are there? What if there you go? Capo says, "What if Mancrick's wife doesn't die? What if?" Um, but then we've got the, all of the. Um, oh my goodness, I forget the names of the mobs, but all the ones in Razor Fang Crawl and everything else. What if the um, those kind of pig dudes just spread out and take control of the crossroads, like? There's there's lots of stuff there that, that that you can have a story with, and that can stretch yeah. out loads of everything, you know. And if they want to input a new dungeon, then you know the stories that Quill Boss, thank you, Capo. Um, they can turn around and like turn, have a look at this dungeon and go, well, you know, this dungeon happened, and you know they won there. And you don't have to like do the whole world everywhere because i'm thinking an expansion the only issue with like an alternate azeroth is how much you do they can do the limits of the time I, like when you go back to the, the chromic scenario you only have so much you can go to before you are told you can't go anywhere and the same with like the cavern so instead so we could t take specific areas like you're saying and that would allow them to build enough content out but without having to build an entire two continents worth. Because the other thing is, there is some stuff that we haven't ever visited 
and if they do just redone continents, the community is not going to be happy. I mean, well, some of them will, but some won't be. I mean, yeah, that, that, that's true. But, you know, it, it allows us to see stuff. I'm a big sucker for what if stories. Oh, me know? too. I, um, I love Doctor Who. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And, I mean, I'd like to see a story where, you know, the the, the the original, you know, Lich King stuff where we had the plague, that happens. But what if the Scarlet Crusade was successful? Balnazar doesn't take charge and doesn't inhabit them. But what if they wipe clean all of Tiras Full Glades and the Plague Lands and just control all of the North? Including Lord and just set up Lord on as the new Scarlet Crusade capital in the north. And then if if they did that, they would reuse some some assets, but still make some, some other new ones. And they could then be doing a lot of their energy on the next expansion with even more new zones. Absolutely. Like, I mean, there could be a lot to it. You know, I mean. I yeah. I think that there's an idea that can sit there where we break through to the alternate Azeroth starting in Tanaris, you know? And we go out through there. And, like, we got Thousand Needles. We might see untouched Thousand Needles. Who knows? But, like, it'd be interesting to see. Like, I'm not asking to... Um, for another revamp of the world i'd like to see alter an alternate thing yeah and but i think an alternate azeroth might allow them to use what they already have plus add in new stuff you know i mean it it does it does mean that i'm asking for a very in-depth expansion because giving us tenaris where we come back in and we start on kalimdor you know and the caverns of time in this alternate alternate azeroth is basically the shared capital and we have to fight outwards from there you know so yeah. it's it's basically like all the pre pre-launch stuff could be trying to take the caverns of time back so and then that's where we start in the next expansion just we're there that's going to be our capital and then we work outwards from there to go outwards you know they could add 10 levels stretch out the expansion or something and maybe just go up there but then it will be all about taking back kalimdor but then we still know that there's eastern kingdoms pandaria northrend everything that's already there on the sultan of azeroth and they can expand it outwards i'm not expecting like an entire that would be like re-asking for everything from classic onwards again you know i know that we're only expansion wise gonna get like a continent per thing but i don't know i've just been thinking about it all week you know yeah. and it would it would culminate in the proper end time where we actually fight murazond you know yeah and i've i said uh, ali's been getting me excited about some like some of these these history things like i like where we went back to the the through the time to fix it and i've and, and ever since caverns i've always wanted more of this i mean this is Right up my alley. Uh, pun, pun intended. <laughs> no, not intended. I mean, but yeah, I, I've always liked the, the man. Every time I'm on here, I've always you, you always get me excited for things, and I'm like, you, you better not disappoint me. If if, if if one of these things doesn't happen, I'm gonna be very upset. Well, it's fine. Just get Blizzard to hire me, and I'll start feeding them my ideas for stories. It's it's fine. Um, I I have a feeling, regardless of whether or not, we'll still see something to do with the Infinite Dragonflight at some point. Um, yeah, it is. They've been silent. Yeah, they've been silent for a long time. It is one of the big unresolved storylines. Like, the biggest unresolved storylines, and I'm sure chat will probably shout us out and tell us what's different, but we've got Bolvar as the new Lich King. Uh, we've got who put, who whispered to Vol'jin to put Sylvanas in charge. We've got... Oh, goodness, what have we got? Well, we've obviously got the old god for this, the rest of this expansion and everything else and whatever, wherever that story takes us. We've got the infinite dragonflight. In terms of big lore threads, I'm not sure what else we're missing, though. That's the thing. And this fits in the thing. Interviews with uh, with Christy and the story people have said that we are on the first of a three expansion arc. Legion finished the one arc. Yes. BFA started the next one. Putting this here would make sense. Like I don't think we're gonna kill Nazoth or or Ashara. I but they're gonna lead into what's happening. 
And then that would make sense. Then we finally take down in the third one. Because I think we th there's some technology that we need somewhere. There's something that we need to take down these big bads. Th there's a reason the Titans haven't been able to take out the, the old gods. There there's something that... I think this three arc is specifically surrounding Sylvanas. I think that's the big thing that it is. See, while she wasn't the biggest part in Legion, a lot of her story was there regarding the Valkyrs and, you know, trying to stay, find a way to make her people survive. And it, it, her, her story has always been trying to make the undead survive, you know, and like find a way for them to live on. And now that's, yeah. that seemed to have transitioned to Sylvanas wanting a mastery of undeath, or death, as it were. Yeah, and, well, in, in, in power, because like in the, yeah. before the storm, she was afraid of losing her power. Mm -hmm. there's, there's something to that. She, she, was, she didn't want her people talking with the humans, and that's why she killed them, because that, that could have gone differently. And when I did Dark Shore for those, those two toys that you mentioned, mm -hmm. I, for, I forgot that one of the, the, the Valkyr died. In that in that dark sword thing, yep. so she's down to t to one back here now. I cannot remember how many. I think she's got a couple more left. Okay, um, but but yeah, uh, they're, they're, as I said, I really do think like thinking about it with how much Sylvanas has been key in a lot of the Horde direction. That I think this three arc is going to be the third arc will be more Sylvanas, which is why originally last week I said Shadowlands, but. You know, the more I think about it, the more I want, the more I want a uh, an infinite dragon flight. Just mostly because you know we get to see we get to see everything about it. But I also want to see. I then also want to see this um, this sweeping of the light thing and see this light light forged Garrosh hell scream. Because it's interesting. You really need to get your honor bound up to exalted because. There's a lot about Garrosh here that you don't see. Like, Anachrono oh. Anachronos specifically says in that point where we overlook the throne room, that in many timelines, Garrosh is a hero to his people. Where he, where, wow. where people even call him the greatest leader the Horde has ever had. This, was, this timeline was specifically the worst of anything that Garrosh could be. What if there's one where Sylvanas is different? Yeah, it could be. There could be one where Sylvanas doesn't die in the in the march of the undead towards Silvermoon. Yeah. Wow. Garrosh not being evil. There, <laughs> um, there's a lot that can be seen, and alternate timelines. The, the biggest problem is that if they do do the infinite dragon flight and we go along the lines of alternate timelines, it's going to unfortunately face that same stigma that Warlords had. But the only way the only way Blizzard are going to combat that is if they're very transparent about their, their road plans and everything else. But unfortunately, when a lot of... And your camera, I think, is frozen. No, nope, there we go. Um, unfortunately, a large part of what Blizzard do... And a lot of it gets spoiled because of the data mining and everything else. And they don't realistically want to say what their road plan is. But what if they turned around and went at BlizzCon and they announced they announced the next WoW expansion. And then we go, what's coming next? And so they'll talk about what's coming in 8.3 at BlizzCon. That's what I fully expect. So they'll, they'll announce a new expansion in the opening segment. What's next uh, in Warcraft will be 8.3 discussion. And then... Once we get the next expansion launch, which I imagine will be just before BlizzCon or everything else, then they'll go, what's next Warcraft next year at BlizzCon in 2020? And then they'll turn around and go, this is our roadmap. Okay? Opening thing. And I'm going to use the Infinite Dragonflight expansion as an example here. Because it's all it's all mentally planned up here. We get Kalimdor on this alternate Azeroth. Okay? 8 point... 8 point... Two, they'll open up the Eastern Kingdoms. You know, uh, sorry, not so. Nine point oh will have Kalimdor, where we go and fight for Kalimdor and try to fight off what's there to try and slow down the Infinite Dragon Flight. Eight, uh, nine point two. So nine point one will have, say, the Eastern Kingdoms, and like, it'll be all of there. But then they up the level cap by five levels. 
Okay. So that you actually have a meaning to go and do progression across there. So we'd be beginning 15? No, no, no. We'll do five levels at 9.0. Five levels in 9.1. 9.2, we'll see Northrend. And we'll follow the same sort of progression. Okay? And then 9.3 will open Pandaria. And then there'll be all of these particular points. And we'll see all of these alternate timelines. So we'll see anything that could be a what if regarding Northrend and, you know, Ice Crown. You know, maybe maybe we do see Tyrion Forging that actually took the mask at Ice Crown. And he's leading. But, you know, he's changed the Scourge. He actually has the power there and whatever. But when we get to Pandaria, we actually see that maybe the Shah, we, we've, we've, we're there with the Emperor. The Emperor didn't hide Pandaria in the mist and the Shah are there and everything else. And they're trying to combat it down there. You know, there's lots of, and maybe the Klaxi, or maybe the Klaxi took control of Pandaria. You know, maybe they, they with the power of the Infinite Dragonflight, they won that. You know, but we do five yeah. levels, everything. And it gives people that content to do. You know, but you don't. You, it gives you a reason to stretch out. Like people, are, p the people that want to play are just going to bomb it down. But then you give them you this way. You can do an eight-month patch cycle because the continent's already there. We, they can just play with the environment, like we've already said. You know, yeah. And and so you have an eight-month patch cycle, and you'll have one raid, one one singular big raid, and a, a, a couple of like they keep the same world bosses going throughout everything, and. The, the thing I spoke about in episode 1 about the changes to Pathfinder if everybody, if you do the quest and the explorer in each zone of Kalimdor, you can fly there, you know, once you finish that flying's done, you've got Pathfinder there but then you can't fly in 9.1 on Eastern Kingdom side until you've done all of the explorer and, path, and got the Pathfinder there, so you can keep it, you know, put world quests in the bin, done with those and then you can just have like um, a mission table which turns around and says which faction do you want to champion today I and mean, then you can go there every day and you'll have some different quests that are on a rotating basis like daily quests but you know and that way people aren't burned out and they can just go and do stuff they want to do and this would give people what they've been asking for i mean me included some of the pre-cataclysm stuff but different zones so like these zones aren't what we expect yeah so that way it the, the time they put into redeveloping the zone maps will be worth it yeah so you 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 could see classic stuff you could see stuff pocked by the cataclysm you could see stuff changed by the infinite dragonflight and everything else and like i'm i'm thinking like arthas what if we were able to stop arthas from becoming evil what yeah or what the, what if arthas was stopped in in uh the eastern kingdoms you know yeah and this is what i'm saying uh, the scarlet crusade will have power silver moon won't be burnt but you know, there could be something. Silvermoon could be a shining, glistening city up there. Maybe we can stop Nomergon from falling. No, uh, unfortunately, in every timeline, Nomergon is a is a husk. Uh, it's an empty oh. husk uh, because the only way to cure Nomergon is to fill it with water. And so the dam from Loch Madan is just siphoned into Nomergon, and there's just drowned gnomes everywhere. Oh, <laughs> all those. Oh, there. You mean? Are they leopard gnomes at least? That yeah, but they're, they're, all, they're all drowned leopard gnomes. Okay, okay. As long as they're not leopard gnomes, I'm fine. I don't... Hashtag, I don't care about leopard gnomes. Um, but yeah, I mean, I can't choose these. But I think it gives content for people. Yeah. You know, and it's it's a, maybe a little bit idealistic. But exp expanding your content... So you have one continent per patch. Gives you all of that to do. And then you just don't burn people out. Because you've given them the extra two months to do. But then they have a lot of extra bits and pieces. So. It's just interesting. Yeah. I'm with you. Because. One thing that, that, that I think. Two expansions two years for every expansion is a hard cycle i mean i mean i mean that's we're asking a lot from from, from the blizzard every two years mm -hmm. and if you expand it out by giving us content i don't want the i don't want the warlords drought i mean one of the content creator that would be painful to be 
talk about the same stuff. I don't know how those content creators did it in Warlords. You have my props for those who did it. But I think it, if we expand it out just a little bit by still giving people stuff, they can really work hard on the expansions. Yeah, and I think if we just get uh, a couple of world rate, a couple of world bosses again, that once once a week will just rotate around the continent. And people can do that, and uh, one raid per patch, but it's a good raid. You know, it's something yeah. that's a big thing. Like, say nine point two, we go to the Eastern Kingdoms. You know, we like every every one of these raids is going to be something big on there that's been time changed by the infinite dragon flight so not only are we are we in there attacking what's what's changed but also the forces of the infinite dragon flight as well which will be like an ultimate cul culmination where we fight against murazond in 9.4 okay but say i mean the biggest thing on kalimdor that ever happened was obviously uh Archimond climbing the world tree at high jail we don't want to rehash that because the only way you could rehash that is to, for Archimond to actually burn the tree and that just ends everything over there but there could be there could be something that'll happen in in there you know it, i don't know but like the only thing that springs to mind in say 9.2 9.1 even would be uh fighting in stormwind go and take on Van Cleef and the forces of the Infinite Dragonflight and everything else. You know? As we said, 9.3, we can go fight Bolvar, uh, not Bolvar, Tyrion Fordring, who's leading the Scourge up at Ice Crown. And didn't Sylvanas at some point mention trying to take Silver Stormwind somewhere? Silver, um, in the in the book, she wants to take Stormwind. That's her ultimate goal. Like, okay. she, she wants to take Stormwind. Um, as did Garrosh in the Siege of Orgrimmar. But, you know, I mean, Pandaria, we could fight the Shah properly. We could face Yassage properly, rather than just the Shah all over the place. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to think what the biggest thing on Kalimdor could be, to be fair. I'm just trying to think of all the different stories that have happened around maybe, maybe the Green Dragonflight. They're over there for the most part. Maybe something that's story-wise to do with the druids. Xavius, maybe. But we just fought Xavius. We could give Xavius a proper fight, though, instead of the circular room he was in. Christ. Yeah, all, all the white stuff. Mm. Yeah, that. There's, there's lots of story. There's lots of elements there. And it gets Blizzard to play with what-ifs, because a large part of this goes back to... Draenor and the Magkar Orcs and the Lightbound Draenei and goes, well, what if the Draenei are bad? You know, we'll take this story where the Nauru are, uh, are pushing the Draenei to embody the light and be light forged and everything else and be part of that army of the light. You know, that's a what if right there. So it could be something. And I know this is wildly out of left field, but the more my brain thinks about it, the more it goes... I could do five levels, you know, and do content over eight months and then see the next continent on launch and do another eight months of that. Because, yeah. you know, as I said, like, I think I said this last week where they've probably, they've got two teams, one that works on the current content, one that works on the next one. You know, it's a lot easier to pick a landmass, rework on that and redo all of that up to today's standard. They could take the classic mainframe and just work on that and make the changes where they need to. You know, it's just doing the story over those continents and bits and pieces. Could be fun. Could be interesting. But, you know, and then you could take the the, expand, the team that's working on BFA and take them to where you want the next story to be after the Dragonflight expansion or, or everything else. I don't know. I, I'm i all on board for this idea. Like I said, I, I've always been a sucker for, for time travel, so, and alternate timelines... I think it's more of an alternate timeline than it would be time travel. Although time travel obviously has stuff to do with it because it's the bronze and infinite dragon flights. But saying an alternate timeline is a lot easier, you know, because we've obviously got the problem with um, it being an MMO. You can't go and do time travel while um, uh, without changing the main world. And people want that main world to, to use. 
you know and i don't think the game would work well for another cataclysm type change yeah though we, when we went to argus in legion we were technically out of out of sync even though we were back on on legion bfa is the post argus world yeah but we, we can see that because it's the red star in the sky like if you look up that that legion is still there you know it's, it's that red dot in the sky box uh, yeah, I haven't actually looked to see if it's in any of the BFA zones, but it's definitely there if you go to any of the other old world stuff. Yeah, I've, I've seen it. Yeah, I haven't looked in the closely, but I I did notice it when I was mm. on my, one of my alts. It's um, but yeah, the the only thing that's definitely there is is Dranor is completely separate to where we are. You know, we're not meant to be able to go back there, but it's it's an interesting it's an interesting thing. To go back there and i do suggest that you you finish on a bound do your do the um the invasions because they, they they're guaranteed rep with on a bound okay um that'd be the biggest thing to do even if you're even if you're still leveling um it's good xp for level because if you're under 120 then you get a uh you get a an xp buff when you're leveling in either zone and that stacks. Okay. I mean, I think you've got a. I think you've got Dark Moon Fair on the US, but we have on the EU, and uh, Dark Moon Fair is an extra ten percent as well right now. So, so yeah, I do suggest you do that. But you've got your own leveling plans. You, you're a man that does a lot of things and has a lot of things on his plate to get on with. So, but yeah, and and, and that's not even with classic because the more I'm talking with, with people about classic, the more I'm excited to. On stream, I'm not going to play classic by myself. I don't think I'm going to do on stream, but I'm excited to go back to the classic and see what people think. What a noob I am doing all this stuff. <laughs> I've enjoyed just, it with irons. Yeah, just to, just take just take classic uh, slowly is the biggest suggestion I can make. Oh yeah, um, uh, I saw one that was out. They said, don't use add-ons. I saw a new coordinates add-on, and I'm not going to act like a purist. But I don't think, think in classic I want a the coordinates because I didn't use any add-ons in classic. I mean, well, no, I did use some of the CT mod stuff. So I, I mean, I may use the extra action bars, but I I didn't use quest stuff in classic, and I don't think I want to do because I don't want to burn through classic. I don't want to have it be gone because unless we get the extra content, there's not much more to classic once I finish it all. I mean, there, there's just the grind at endgame. That's all there is. And uh, that's a lot of time in itself. A lot of people are just saying... I mean, there was there's an interesting video that exists on YouTube saying, um, can a casual play Classic WoW? And they can. They absolutely can. But, like, you're going to be looking like you'll get to level 60 by the time Blackwing Lair and everything else is around. So you'll be able to see Molten Core because you'll still have people that are doing Blackwing Lair go back to Molten Core and get the, the loot because the loot in Molten Core is really good, uh, even with the itemization changes. And it's it's just going to be a lot of that for the most part. So you can do it at your own pace, absolutely. And I suggest it really depends on the story you want to see because unless we see... Again, this is taking it back to the conversation we had last week. Until we know what they're doing post Nax, which they probably haven't even looked at yet, because you know we're gonna have they've got two two and a half years worth of content to stagger out. Yeah, and they're like six phases. Yeah, uh, yes, but it, they've got all of that to stagger out. So it's like they're probably not. It's probably not even anything that's on their mind until we they even get that close to nax and everything else it probably won't be something they consider until you know post blackwing lair i'd imagine you know and maybe when they because they'll be working on making sure the launches for each of their faces will work fine and maybe once they get to nax and see how people fare in nax and aq then they'll possibly think well we're getting to the end what do we want to do because they'll have to start yeah. working on content once if they wanted to go ahead, they'll have to start working on content once Classic launches. Yeah, and they're, they're still going to want to figure out the ways to keep people there. I mean, I, they'll they'll quickly see if the ROI is there for, for extra content. I mean, like, like they have all the telemetry data and stuff like that. But I can see one reason why they're, they're, they're staggering stuff is they don't want people to sub for one month and then leave. Because that 
that messes with their with their margins. I mean, I mean it, to me, that's only the smart way to do it. I mean, you're not you're not wrong, um, but you got to remember that that one sub gives them access to classic and retail. So that is true. I mean, I as a player will probably do my stuff in retail and then dip my toe into classic if I feel like it. Again, I, I'm waiting to see the server situation um, yeah. more than anything else. Uh, if a server's allow me to choose to play on US, where a lot of the people I know are probably going to play, um, then I'll do that. But, you know, it'll be interesting. Like, it'll be interesting to see where the Blue Recluse lot go. It'll be interesting to see where the guys in chat are going to play. Because I think I think a lot of these are the US players anyway. So it'll be... Because um, Kappa's US. I think uh, stuff like Leo Wild is US and everything else. It'll be oh, interesting. and I got to say, it's just a cool thing about geographical borders. It was cool seeing a pizza. You eating a pizza that I bought. I just, I love that. That's just something that same day I was able to give you a pizza. I mean, and because you're, we're in different countries across the pond. I mean, yeah. that shows where our world is. It was that crazy. Stuff like that. It was absolutely crazy. It was it good? Oh, it was nice. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I devoured it. But it's just, just a shame it turned up so late because I would have eaten it on stream otherwise. But it was, uh, it was just the same. Um, I'm a gnome. I'm always late. <laughs> brilliant stuff um what's your like what's the biggest story that you you've your law or story in wow or in the books that sticks with you that you'd want to see in say this infinite dragonflight thing like changed in some way what's the, what's the biggest story that you're aware of that you'd like to see or or has stuck with you i think it's some of the war i i want to see more of gilneas some some of that there, there is more there. I mean, like the the city was destroyed because the war gonna are refugees. I mean, they they were t they were taken out of their home, and you can't get. I, there's a lot of those cities I would love to see more of, and I would love okay. to see more like more of like Strathholm. I, I remember doing the Captain Time Strathholm raid. Mm -hmm. That is a that's a gorgeous Strathholm. City. You mean? Yeah, no, that was Strathholm. Sorry, my bad. I, f I thought you meant Sholo for some reason. My brain's uh, my brain's not. Ticking over quick properly. Oh no, I I always get solo and stuff this confused. Like I, I kept thinking thankfully I figured out and this is a teaser of an upcoming, upcoming joke on the prize report. I always think of solo as the the uh, the show romance, the, the school of romance. Yeah. So that way I think it's a school of magic. Makes sense. Whereas um, Strathholm is a city like Stormwind. Yeah. But taking what you said about Gilneas if we if we go with what we're saying, where the 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 plague got pushed back in the north by the Scarlet Crusade and everything else, then Gilneas wouldn't have to worry about the work and everything else. So Gilneas would still be there. The doors may or may not be locked and everything else. But I like what Capo says. What if Lincoln becomes the true hero of time? You know, what if Lincoln Lincoln steps up and um. You know, steps up and becomes this thing in the caverns of time, and we see him become a a law figure for this alternate universe. And what if Lord Ron? What if we don't let Lord Ron fall? That's it. What if Lord Ron stays as a big city? I mean, because because one reason I like the the undead Forsaken is seeing this, this the ruins and what they did with it. But I've always been captivated by the idea of these kingdoms that fell. I, I find ruins and abandoned places fascinating for that. That. I mean, there's also um, the keep in Arathi Highlands, because oh, yeah. you know Trollbane and that wouldn't have fallen. So there's that as well on the edge of um, uh, the hills, Bradfoot Hills, and everything else. Like the entire of the Eastern Kingdoms, if the if the Undead Plague doesn't become a thing, is going to be completely kept. You know, you have, but they'll all be segregated. You know, especially if Van Cleef takes Stormwind. You know, and the Stonemasons have Stormwind. And so you have the Stonemasons to Stormwind. You've got Trollbane up in the Arathi Highlands. You'll have Gilneas there. You've got the Scarlet Crusade, say, if they do take Lorder on. Or, you know, you know after after it was once purged by Arthas and everything else before it got pushed back. You know, there's there's the, that entire thing where the human, the, the human alliance could still be a thing. And then, as I said, we get to Silvermoon would be unkempt as well. There's there's yeah. a lot there. Again, how, what if stories? Yeah. How about you? What, what's the story that's that's stuck with you that you'd love to see more of? 
You see, I, I, I got ready to ask you this, and I didn't really think about it myself. Let me have a look at my... I'm looking at my books. I mean... I put you on the spot. That's it, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um, the old gods are always really interesting to me. So, who knows? Maybe maybe Cthune and um, the, the Akir. Maybe they actually win the War of the Shifting Sands, but they're still kept to Silithus. Maybe they can't escape Silithus. Like there's a barrier there that, like they couldn't. The dragon, the green, the dragon flights, and the night elves and the orcs. They couldn't keep them contained in the actual anchorage, but they managed to put up a magical barrier around Silithus. Ooh. <laughs> You're gonna be thinking about all this stuff. There's, it's it's fun to just think about what ifs and everything else. To be fair. Yeah. Anyway, I think that's a good point while Frasley meditates on his what-ifs to, to call it a day there, actually. A bit of a shortish yeah. episode, but last week we overran by a little bit, so I want to try and cut this one down and try and keep it in its its era. So thank you very much for watching us live. Um, if not live, thank you for watching us on YouTube or listening to us on all the good podcast catchers, iTunes, Spotify, all those good things wherever you can find us. Uh, I've been Pete, Titans Creed Nethercoat. You can find me on the socials at Titans Creed on twitter you can find me at gaming phoenix you can find me on youtube.com slash project phoenix productions or twitch.tv slash project phoenix productions mr frasley where can they find you on the social media uh, you can find me on twitter at frasley tastic you can find me every week at gnomepodcast.com and uh just recently launched gnome.live that's my new streaming site that i'm i'm starting and that has access to all my socials as well there so i'm trying to be everywhere 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 but yes thank you very much uh this has been us for today uh yeah and we'll see you next week ladies and gentlemen until next time be awesome <laughs>